In this segment, I'm going to review the Edit drop-down menu. And so we'll be talking about things like undo, redo, cut, copy, paste, unselect, select, select all, invert selection, um, duplicate design, group, ungroup, join, break apart, and we'll talk about design starting and ending points. So yeah, um, a lot of these functions are also functions that are found on your main toolbars because they're important functions like copy and paste, undo and redo, or the select all, or invert your selection. So that's going to be where um, you'll more often find the, and use these tools. But just to go through the edit drop down menu and sure we be sure we look at everything. So basically, what I've got here is the design of a star. And maybe what I'll do is just click on an area to select an area. And you can see here that I've selected the light blue fill, but I have not selected the dark blue outline and perhaps to make that easy to visually see I'll just move it over so you can see here that I've got um, I've selected the light blue fill but not selected the dark blue outline now why don't we look at for example under the edit drop down menu we've got the invert selection you have select all which would select all objects unselect which would unselect whatever you have selected but the option for invert selection if I choose that you can see what happened now instead of having the light blue selected I ended up with the dark blue selected so basically the way it works whatever you have selected will become unselected and whatever you don't have selected will become selected now um, remember these are also found here on the toolbar so the other options are for for example unselect that basically lets go of everything or select all that's a quick way of selecting everything in your design and remember you can always select an object just by simply clicking on that object um, you can either click on it here in the workspace or here in your sequence manager and whenever you select on an object it becomes highlighted in your sequence manager and it gets outlined in your workspace so that was the other option was to invert your selection and that's what will switch it from having um, basically whatever is selected becomes not selected and whatever is not selected becomes selected so those are some selecting options um, so the other some features under the edit drop down menu well we've got undo and redo so right now redo is not an option and that's because um, it'll only become an option when you once you undo something so if I what undo is available so if I choose undo basically it's gonna move that fill back to wherever I had placed it because that was the last um, modification or transformation that I had made and now if I choose the edit drop down menu I could go to redo which would put it back to wherever I'd moved it to so that's undo and redo and again you've got undo and redo on your main toolbar as well so I'll set I'll choose undo and it puts it back so also under the drop down menu we've got cut copy and paste and those are can be very helpful for example um, what I'll do is I'll select just the light blue fill in this design and then here I have the same cut copy and paste now cut will basically remove this light blue fill from the design I'll use that so it's now gone but it puts it onto an imaginary clipboard this is the clipboard of your computer and so if I say paste it puts it back in but you'll notice what's changed about the design is the sewing sequence because originally it sewed light blue and then dark blue and what happened was when I cut the fill out of the design it took it out of the design sequence put it onto that clipboard and when I hit paste it actually put it after the return to center and it made it be the last object of the design now of course I could resequence that at any time by clicking and dragging to place that back where I want it to um, but now that I've done cut and paste I could actually paste again and it gives me another copy of the blue and every time I hit paste it gives me another copy of the object that I've put on my um, imaginary clipboard so that's basically what happens and the difference between cut and copy so basically why don't I choose the dark blue outline just so that I have something different here so here I'm gonna select the dark blue outline and instead of saying cut if I just say copy it leaves the dark blue outline as it is but it puts it 
Now my imaginary clipboard no longer has a light blue piece of fill, it has a dark blue outline. And so if I hit paste, it adds another outline. I can move it over there. If I hit paste again, I got another one. So you can see here that I've created um, several pieces of weave fill, and now I've created several satin stitch outlines by using that copy and paste feature. So that's kind of how that works. Now, also under the edit drop down menu, um, there, I found an option here called Paste Special, and I found this uh, to be something unique I haven't come across many times. And basically, I couldn't find a lot to read about, but um, from what I can tell, what it's asking us, when you paste something, do you want to paste it as wings, objects, or an enhanced metafile? And so I'm not exactly sure of the application for this. Um, but it's something that perhaps we can learn about a little bit more going forward with the software. Um, but I didn't find too much in the documentation about exactly what the purpose of Paste Special is. So, going forward with the Edit drop down menu, we also have the options of Group and Ungroup and Join and Break Apart. So, why don't I take a look at using those? Oh, I've skipped one, by the way Duplicate Design. Um, this is an easy one. So, if I just choose right now Duplicate Design, what it actually did, here you can see it looks exactly like the design that we were just working on, but if I come to the window drop down menu, now you can see that I actually have two designs. Design number untitled number five and untitled number four. We were working on untitled number four, but when I chose duplicate, it actually went ahead and created a whole nother design that's exactly like it. And this, I can think of lots of great reasons why you might want to do that. But just as an example, if you've got a design and then you want to come in and make some modifications to it, but you don't want to overwrite the original, you want to keep your original design exactly the same as it is, then you could just say, um, open up the design, make a duplicate of it, then you could save it with its own unique name and that way any edits you made to the new design wouldn't affect your original design so that's just an example of why you might want to do that so looking down the edit drop down menu we still want to talk about group and ungroup and join and break apart so why don't we go ahead and select some things because as you can see they're gray which means whenever something's gray I can't use it unless I do something first. And in this case, if I wanted to group something, well, why don't I go ahead and, um, I'm gonna click and drag a box around the two satin outlines. And you can see that two objects have now been selected. So if I said edit and group, now I'm gonna click off to let go of what's selected. And notice now, if I try and select this design, this star up here, as soon as I click on it, both stars become selected. And if I wanted to move the star, both stars would move together at the same time. So basically, what's happened is we've made them like they're one object. But really, they're two objects that have been grouped together. And the reason I say that is because you would also have the ability to, under the Edit drop down menu, to choose Ungroup. Now that I've chosen Ungroup, I should be able to select one star or the other star. So that's one way you could say select all and then edit and then group and now I have a group of objects and I could easily select them by just clicking anywhere and if I wanted to move them they would all move together. So that's the idea of group and the alternative is ungroup. Puts them all back. Uh, the final options under that edit drop down menu are join and break apart. And so, for example, here, notice um, right now this outline sews, and then the next object is this outline. That's the order that I had created them in. And you can see here that this outline finishes sewing right there, and then it runs down and it starts sewing the next object right there. Now, if I was to, and I'm just going to click and drag a box to select those two objects and I'm going to say edit and I'm going to say join. Now not only does it group them together so that they become uh, selectable together as a group but notice that the starting and stopping position changed because now where the star that sews first 
finishes has been moved to down here so that it can become basically attached to this star down here. So that's the kind of difference between group and join is that when you join something, it actually makes the software see it like it's all one object and it changes the sewing order to connect them as well. Now, um, the alternative to that, if I select this, would be to edit, would be to break apart. So if I choose break apart, it goes back to the beginning. So now again, I can select them individually and that sewing sequence has changed back so that they're two completely separate sort of stars in that design. And there's one more thing under the edit drop down menu I should look at too, and that's the design start end point. So you have the ability to move the start point of your design, to move the end point of your design. You can move the start and end point together at the same time, or you can have your design return to the starting point. So if you chose to move your starting point, then you could, after that, choose to have the design return to that start point. Um, I'll do this one. Move start and end point. So it's going to move them together. And right now you can see, before I do that, um, this design starts sewing. Well, I'm not even exactly sure where it starts sewing. Let's see. This star here. So it must start somewhere right in the center of that design. Um, but you can see here that that's where the design currently, that's where the ending point of this design is. So it used to return to center to there. And But now the last piece of embroidery is sitting right there. And so if I was to say edit, start endpoint, and say uh, move start and end, it gives me a grid. I can see um, it basically puts a, a rectangle around my entire design and that rectangle has a center point both horizontally and vertically which would actually make it very easy for me to select the center of this entire piece of embroidery so if I choose the center with this crosshair right there it moves the starting point and the ending point to be the same place so now you notice that this star that sews last has a line that's returning back to the center of the design. So that's your ability to make a, a change to the starting point and the ending point of your design. Um, yeah, so that's the edit drop down menu and a quick review of all of the features found under the edit drop down menu.